Lou, do you want to say hello to everyone? Hello, viewers. How's it going? It's a lovely morning. So I'm in my garage with Lewis. Lewis has got... It's not brand new now, but it's very new, isn't it? When did you get this? Uh, it's new to me, so I got it end of Jan 2021. 21, so it's a yeah. new car. Lewis has washed it and clayed it in advance, brought it round, and we've just washed it off, dried the car and brought it in. And all we're doing is just taking out the fine swirling that you'll be able to see, which I can't see the camera. It, yeah, you can see it on the camera a little bit, can't you? Um, there's just some fine swirling, a little bit clay by marring, and we're just gonna tidy the car up. And Lewis, this is the first time you've machine polished a car. Yeah, never done it before. So and you're uh... gonna see, you're gonna see someone's literally first polishing set ever. Yeah. So should we get started? Yeah, let's do it. So, the important thing I'm just going to write up here is the little simple set piece. Um, the set piece, one, clean pad. Two, so we've got a brush to do that. We'll talk through that when we do it. Two, place product on pad. So, place product, place polish on pad. Three, spread polish on target on target set which will be a two by two square two foot by two foot shoulder width on target spread on target sounds like a military term yeah it does <laughs> spread on target four um so low speed low speed so we don't sling sling it all around everywhere uh work abrasive so you do your set work up the abrasive uh uh speed four to five um, and that's the, obviously the, that's the crucial bit. We're going to do that in a little crosshatch pass, you know, where you yeah. do about four sets of this. We'll talk a bit more about that. We want to do 50% overlap because the outside of the pad will lift up. So if you don't overlap them, you'll get little areas, dots there that aren't polished as much. And you can see on the swirly car, the bits you miss. So it's important to get the overlap. We'll do four or five vertical horizontal passes, stop polishing. Turn off machine, remove polish, so wipe off polish, remove polish, which is a separate step with our cloths. Where's our cloths? Oh, we'll know. get the cloths <laughs> out. <laughs> that top yellow drawer is the one. We're going to use the good ones. Down, 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 down. That's it. Oh, yeah, nice. The inter detailing. 350 Korean, yellow, edgeless. 10% off with forensic. <laughs> yeah, code discount. Yeah. You watch the channel. Remove polish. Um, six you know now optional you can do inspection wipe down inspection wipe down with an IPA? yeah with a little ipa and a clean side of the cloth wipe down to really inspect it properly with no polishing oils but if it looks good under heavy light when you look then generally that's good enough the stuff that you're going to reveal when you do an inspection wipe down is the very fine machine marring that you might not see but on this type of OEM original paint, it's going to finish down really nice. So that's that's sort of a little bit down to personal preference and how much time you've got. Yeah. Uh, after inspection wipe, you go back to stage one. <laughs> there is no seven. And you've just got to maintain the standard throughout the entire car. And of course, we're going to polish a nice easy section here for the first polishing set. Of course, there's difficult sections like trying to polish that bit, but... We essentially just do the same thing and we, we'll talk a little bit about edges always polish over the edge because again because of the lift if you polish up to the edge you'll be leaving a channel where you don't actually polish so that's why with the dual action polishes you can always get the swirls left around the edge so polish over the edge um but don't and don't press into the, the raised line so don't polish up and down a raised line just polish over it don't worry about it it's not sharp edge um you know but don't polish up and down those raised swage lines and that's it so what we'll do now guys is i'll stop the camera we'll set up lewis will do his first set and then we'll see how that feels and you know what you think about it nice okay we're back so lewis is going to be using a dual action cordless polisher which is a devault 848x um now let's go through the set piece then so we've got a soft pad on there that's going to give us a bit of cut and we're going to be using Sonax Perfect Finish, which will give us a little bit of a cut, but a really good level of finish. 
and it's nice and easy to buff. So the first thing we've got to do is clear our pad. So let's just pretend that we've been doing loads of polishing and that pad's dirty. All you do is fire the machine up and then that's it. He's got it. He's done this before. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you just work from the inside. And all, when this is covered in sort of white polish, you just want to make sure you can see the surface of the pad and the little pores of the, the sponge. If it's all caked, you'll know what I mean. It'll have like a gunky, cakey layer on there that you can almost scrape off with your thumb. It's not going to do any good. So you want a nice, clean pad. If after like 10 sets, the pad's warming up and getting really dirty and building up too much spent polish, then rip it off and you can flush it out under the hose and then wedge it in a towel and dry it and put it back on or put another pad on. So we've now cleaned the pad. The next thing is we're going to place four blobs of polish um onto there give it a really good shake actually even a even a modern abrasive it's always a good idea to really shake it up because especially for the first polishing set so yeah just go for like 20 seconds and then uh, that will make sure that we've got everything spread all in the bottle all right that'll do, it? That'll do. how many four four yeah just go slow because it can come hurling out that's it yeah perfect yeah Perfect. Great. Yeah, and then just close the lid. Yeah, close the lid, watch it, yeah, that's it. And then just take that little bit of excess polish off the top of the lid. That's it, just wipe it off. So it won't, you won't build up polish on the lid either. Okay, so we are gonna polish. We might as well just go for a nice, we'll, we, we won't put any edges into the equation. So we'll just go center on that badge and yeah. do a two by two square. So the first we've got to do is dab out on your two by two square all this polish. That's it. It's probably a bit bigger than two by that's two. That's fine, yeah, 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 it's fine, yeah. Shall we come down to the back? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it, now set the machine on its lowest speed. Just work that a bit more else that might splatter. That's it, just, yeah. Right. Set the machine on its lowest speed. 2, That's it. And the trigger lock is on the other side of this. It's uh, it's it's with your finger. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, hold on. You left handed. No, right handed. Yeah. Right -handed. So it's with your finger. Um, just the machine will feel a bit weird at first, but then just let it sit on the panel and make sure it's level. And then when it's happy, just move it around. Well, so just get going. Yeah, and spread. Make a film of polish. That's what we're doing here. And then we'll stop the machine. That's it. Nice and quick. That's it. All the way over here. That's it. Keep going a bit faster, faster. You want to do? That's it. You're just making a. You're making a film. You're not working it. Go, 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 go. That's turbo polish. Yeah, we're not polishing yet. No. This is working the product. That's it. Now stop the machine. So now we've got a film of polish that's nice and thin. It's not going to splatter. Now we set the machine speed up to four and a half thousand. Well, four and a half thousand OPM. Is it? Uh, yeah. Yeah which is fast enough, we just, we just want to make sure that isn't stalling when we're moving it. Generally, if you go on top speed, you'll dry the abrasive up and it's too much vibration, it's a little bit too quick, it heats the pads up too much, so back it down to the speed where you can see that not stalling easily. And then, um, set the machine down, put the weight of your hand on it, and then polish very slowly like a robot with 50% overlap. That's it. That's it, you got it. That's it. Look at that, lovely. Look at that. That's it. You can see the size of the footprint, it's not yeah. the full size of the pad. That's why you've got to have the overlap. That's it. You can polish just straight over that badge. Yeah. You're gonna, when you do, you're not going to cram loads of polish because you made the film. But if you had loads of polish on the pad, you'd cover it all in white stuff. And if it was a different type of badge, it wasn't clear coated, you might not want to polish over it. So it's up to you. You know, Take things up that polish is not going to buff off of. If you get me. Yeah, carry on. You're doing great. That's it. Now we go that way.
it nice and slow, nice and slow, that's it. You might find it more comfy holding the battery yeah. on the end of the tool. But whatever, whatever you find, I, I find uh, with the right hand, that's it, doing that. Once you make an adjustment after you've put the trigger lock on. That's it, just gent, that's it. Is it easier to control, isn't it? Yeah. Easier to get a bit slower. That's it, keep your part. It's like mowing the lawn, this is. Yeah. What would happen and if we hit this? Nothing. Nothing. No. If it, if, it, if it was a big thick film, then we'd cram loads of polish everywhere. We'd sling it all. We, you know, because it's a nice thin film, it's going to be fine. But we'll do that. We'll polish that separately later on. So we've got two more passes to do. Keep going. What? That way again? Yeah, another horizontal and then vertical. And then we'll call that a set. It's tricky, that, isn't it? You get the hang of it after a while. It's, but, yeah, I noticed that. Try and stay off the paintwork with your, with your trousers. Nice and slow, slow, that's it. That's it, go over it, go over it. Okay, we'll, we'll call that, we'll call that a day on that set. So, I mean, how big should your set do? I would, you could break this bonnet down into nine sections. So we'd go slightly smaller. You could do a set there, a set there, a set there. One, two, three, you know, uh, seven, eight, nine. Nine sections is a good way of sizing out a bonnet. So we've done a really big set there. So let's put the tool down. Um, remove polish now. Remove polish. So we've got our things here. Let's take these out. Right, do you want to take one of those? Yes. Pinch the open edge. So you'll, you'll see one, one corner has got four open edges. That's it, that corner there. Yeah. So what you do is you find the open edge, which is that one, pinch it like that between your thumb and your finger, and then put it down like that and keep that pinch between your... And that way it won't ball up on you. You'll be forever. Folder's curse, it's called. Get No, no, like this. Thumb underneath it. Oh, underneath. And on top, like that, and the pressure down on top of it. And gently buff in tiny little circles, tiny circles. That's it. Work your way like you're doing a polishing pass. That's it. You got it now. It'd be hard for me to stay off the paint because I'm short. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's always worse when you're doing that area there. You've got to, you, you've got to lean over, unfortunately. Yeah. It'd be hard for me to do the roof, but I could always use a little That's it. Ladder. You see this perfect finish. One of the nicest things is how easy is that to buff? It's nice. Yeah, it's really nice to buff, it really isn't it? It's slick as well. Actually. Yeah, yeah. But I can see with the light, you've got to go back over it again because there's yeah. loads of polish still there. So you can flip the cloth now if you want. That's it. Just give it a buff. Now you've got 99% of it off. That's it. You can just give it a gent. That's it. I can see it all shining up. All coming. So that is... Um, remove polish. Now what we need to do is inspect results. Where's the torch? Where's the torch? Oh, it's over here. Half the battle. Stay organised. Water's just come out of the bags, yeah? Yeah. And then we look at that paintwork. Yeah, nice. you take the torch and look at it. Give yourself a nice angle, um, you know, so you can, you're looking into the light. And bring the torch back a bit from the paint a little bit and just go over it and look for deep scratches and things that you're not happy with. But I can see straight away that paint's looking amazing. Yeah, it looks good. You can see all the swirling over here. Exactly, yeah. Or the marring. Now, if you're working to a really high standard, 
all the scratches you had in this paint are very light and they come out very quickly, very easily, a perfect finish. When you're, when you're polishing a car that's 10 years old with deep swirls from years and years of wash-related marring, you'll go over and do the inspection and you'll find swirls. And the question is, how many sets you do till you get to a level that you're happy with? And it's down to you and how much time you've got. You might have to do two, two maybe even three sets of cutting sometimes on very heavily swelled paint. Uh, this car, Perfect Finish, is the ideal product because it's going to take out the swirls and it's going to give us a high gloss finish. So now all we have to do is go back to step one, clean, clean the, pad. the pad and uh, start again and maintain the standard. What do you feel, Lewis? It's easy, isn't it? Yeah, it's easy. It's going to be a long process. Yeah. It's going to be hard work. I think if you're going to machine a, a car of this size, you need two days to do it. Uh, well, you could do it in one day, can you? But we've Because it's been cleaned and we've just quickly yeah. cleaned it off. If you were just polishing this yourself, you could do it one day now with a single stage. But if you're doing full paint correction, you, you, you probably multiple sets and you had to prepare it properly, then probably two days is ideal, really, or even longer. But well, it took so, me three hours this day to clean it, chemically decon it and clay bar it. Yeah. And then I polished the wheels and the exhaust. That was about it. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It, it would be you could do mine next. <laughs> you get that joking. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> If I had a pound for every time someone said that, I'd be a rich man. <laughs> okay, so that is our polishing set. We're now going to go and polish this whole car, delivering the same set piece um, to take out all of the clay marring and fine swirling. And the car is going to look smoking. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lewis. Cheers, take guys. care, everyone. See you soon. So, guys, we finished the detail of that lovely BMW. I don't know what the color code for it is, but really like electric, metallic blue on that new G-Series 330. Lovely colour. We've just taken out that marring and made the car look how it should look again. So that's fantastic. And, and the icing on the cake, we put a nice wax on there. So um, one final message. If you're new to detailing, guys, and you, you're lacking the confidence to go ahead and do that full detail machine polish, you know, the decontamination machine polish on your car, then check out the Forensics Detailing Fundamentals course for beginners. Six modules covering the lot from start to finish four hours, 23 minutes, it's all online and there's an embedded link with the discount already in there. So check that out. You can go and do the course and um, you don't have to do it all in one go. It's there by default for 60 days for you to do, drop in and out, dip in and out of it. Um, and you can pay extra to have it available for a year or a lifetime. So check that out and uh, thanks very much for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe. See you soon on the Forensics Detailing channel. Bye for now. Where was I when you